what is up guys this is Kiro back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Evolution XROM which is based on Android 13 of course and this is the first December 2022 build. It has a lot of changes but I have seen recently about 3 updates in just 2-3 to three days and that's because there was some bugs earlier like there was some animation glitches and stuff but all those bugs has been fixed right now and the overall experience of this ROM is amazing right now again. If you want to flash this ROM the guide will be present in the description as usual. Now here app lock and stuff everything is working fine as you just saw and let me actually show you my device is running at 90 fps or 90 hertz. That's because I have changed the refresh rate and this ROM does support up to 90 hertz and the overall experience and the fluidity right now is great. No issues with the animation and stuff while opening any app and stuff. There is no problems whatsoever. If you're noticing, even switching between apps is working flawlessly. So yeah, I haven't seen any issues with the 90 hertz experience overall, but definitely with 90 hertz there is slight bit of color shift. If you are noticing, just notice in this part, I'm gonna just switch the refresh rate from here. From this toggle, I'll just switch to the 60 hertz. I just need to make sure to unlock the device, I guess. Let me just do that. And yes, with 60 hertz and anti flicker mode turned on, this is the normal color. And the white, if you're noticing, it will look much more bluish if you can consider it that way. But if I switch towards this 72 hertz, right now, if you're noticing, the color has slightly tinted to the greenish or yellowish kind of tint, but it's not noticeable, I would say, for the 72 hertz. But from 84 hertz, it's much more noticeable if you're noticing here in the white parts, it has a lot more green tints. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but yeah, I can see that with my eyes and with 90 hertz. Yes, there is that noticeable greenish tint, but it's not a problem. It's just normal thing with any display. If you overclock them, the colors might shift a little bit. That's just normal. And no, it won't supposedly damage your screen or something. If you are wondering or worrying about that, no, it should not damage your screen if it's not already damaged i would say for me at least it has been working great and the animations with 90 hertz overall all over the ui has been great scrolling and zooming and stuff all those things has been great i did not face any issues whatsoever let me show you the about section this is how it looks like we have the evolution x logo up top of course and we have the android version as android 13 if you make this clock to one o'clock you will see those android 13's easter egg and they look beautiful of course let me go back we have the security patch as november 5th 2022 not quite december yet and the evolution x version is 7.3 of course and the name is vengeance for rafael an official build here it's mentioned the stock kernel here is the 4.14 star kernel the soviet star kernel and the build it somehow shows as 13th november but of course this was released on 1st december and here we have the SNX radius as enforcing and the maintainer is of course your Huab. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. We have a system updated. You can check for updates from here. And we have the gestures and the quick tap action and stuff you can customize from right here. You have all these options. Then we have the quick reopen camera, then the system navigation gestures. In the settings of it, we can customize both the pill length and pill radius as usual. We have the swipe to invoke as it and too, so that is working fine. Left edge, right edge, everything is working fine. We have the two button and three button navigations as well. Then we have the double tap options and this is just the double tap to check phone. And here, let me show you the swipe deck screenshot is also working with the shared edit, delete, Google lens and the capture mode feature. Everything is there. You should not worry about it. We have the quick mute playback control and the prevent ringing. Also, we have this press and hold power button action. Let me go back. We have the pop up camera settings there. We'll get the sound effects and you can disable it if you want for the motorized front camera. And we have the camera LED customization. Only thing that I do miss on this particular ROM is in the battery settings. Well, this is what I do not like in this build because right now the battery charging cycle and the battery capacity, design battery capacity, all those things has been removed. This is what I'm disappointed about. It was only the evolution storm where I could see the charging cycle. Here, I cannot see that anymore. We only have the battery temperature, but there are certain features like the battery optimization, charge warning, smart charging and stuff. Then the battery server, battery usage options are there. Let's talk about the battery life right now. And in the Echo battery app, you will see I've got about nine hours plus of screen on time. And that's just a huge amount of number. Even the screen off or the standby time you can see is about four days or more than that. And even combined use is about four to three hours. 
that's about two days worth of usage. So definitely the battery life for me has been great, but you have to keep in mind that I have replaced my battery and I have got a new battery. And with that, if you are noticing my battery health, it shows about 94% and the fast charging and stuff, I did not face any issues. It was great with a 33 watt charger or 80 watt watt charger. It was amazing experience with fast charging. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, this is the camera that you get. This is a Gcam Go, you can say. And yeah, it works great. We have, okay. So for some reason, the front camera shows nothing. This is new. It took a lot of time to actually switch the front camera for some reason. Right now, let's just see. Okay, so right now it's working fine, but for some reason it was stuck as you saw on camera. And here we have the face retouching option in the photo aspect ratio, safe selfie as previewed, all these options. And let me just take a quick portrait selfie so that I can give you a sample. I had this wire in front of me, but yeah, this is how it looks and the blurring is pretty fine. No problems whatsoever. So yeah, the age reduction is not that great as you can see from here. But yeah, overall for taking normal pictures, it's good enough. And yeah, there is no MIUI camera by default at least. And we have this video and photo sessions and stuff. And now here, this is what I like in the Evolution x -Rom. I have installed this LMC 8.4 separately. This is a different kind of camera and you can install it from the description. And the XML and stuff, you will get it from the description too. But here, let me show you. I have installed the same way as I do. And I have imported the Ironheart XML over here. Let me just actually import that again so that I can show you. And with that here, as you can see the normal 1x, 2x option is working fine. Also, all the other lenses should be working fine. This was not working in the other ROMs that I have tried. You might have noticed that on my previous videos, but here just notice the 2x telephoto lens is actually working fine. And let's just switch to the 1x. So this is the normal lens, as you can see the view. And we also have the 0.6x lens. That's the ultra wide angle lens. That too is working perfectly fine here. So all the lenses you can actually switch to in this particular ROM with the LMC 8.4 camera. That's great. And in the video settings, we of course have the full HD 60 FPS. Even we have the 4K 60 FPS. Now here we also have this mic switching option. Also we have the night sight and stuff if you want to use that. So yeah, great Gcam and the quality of it is just amazing. Let me just take a quick picture. And as you can see, the colors are just much, much better with when compared to the other Gcams. And I would say, this is one of the most poppy colors you will get from a Gcam and the LMC 8.4 is just amazing. But you need to install it separately, of course. Now let's talk about the widgets. Yes, the battery widgets I just added and as you can see, it is working fine. I can go into the phone's battery settings. Also, I can go into the Bluetooth battery settings and the animation are working fine for the widgets if you're noticing. And in terms of the home screen, of course, we get the pixel launcher as usual. To the left, we'll get the Google's Discover page and swiping up will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. Now, even in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays dark like this, but the notification panel stays white like this. And I have added multiple toggles. Let me actually show you. You have plethora of option to actually add over here as usual on Evolution Extra. We even have the live display and stuff. Let me just add that and the smart pixel, everything you can add. I'm not adding all those, but yeah, let me show you what I have added. I have the Wi-Fi mobile data and the Bluetooth toggle. And right now, if you tap on the Bluetooth toggle, it will show like this. You can disconnect your Bluetooth device if you want, or you can see the battery stats even from here or the status bar. Now the flashlight, dark theme, everything is there. And once you are turning on or turning off a toggle, it looks like that. And the always on display, you can switch for charging as well if you want. And we have the night light. Then we have the hotspot. The screen recording is also there. We have this HEVC option for the screen recording in the Evolution x -Rom. You can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time with that. And we have these multiple features. The battery saver, do not disturb Google Home controls. And we have the extra dim feature as well. The heads up FPS info is also there. And once you enable that, as you can see, FPS shows up like that. Let me just disable that for the time being. We have the reboot toggle. You can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from here. Then we have the data saver, airplane mode, mute, and we have the refresh rate toggle. And the volume panel appears like this. You can expand the volume panel like this, or you can switch the output device from right here. And the animation of it looks again beautiful. No issues with that. And here we have the live display again, and you can put it into the outdoor bright sun mode or the outdoor brightness mode. It becomes very bright. And of course, we have the power menu appearing just like this. You can go into the advanced reboot. You can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot. Also, in terms of the brightness slider, you can change the position from the customization. And I have this auto brightness toggle right here. In the Evolver, there are customizations, but right now we have the dark theme. And here we have this custom theming option. From here, you can go with the black if you want pitch black. And in the headline body fonts, we right now have this nothing dot headline as you can see and the nothing dot. 
the other font which was removed i don't know which one was removed no idea it was mentioned in the change log by the way and in the icon pack we have these many icon packs and the signal icon styles are here we have the wi-fi icon styles too and right now we have this icon shapes and stuff then we have the nav bar styles in the status bar we have plethora of customization like these many battery icons just notice you can scroll through the battery icons over here landscape r style a landscape aero and the landscape l style a r style b these kind of things like huge amount of battery icons big dot circle and the big circle everything is there you should not worry about it there are plethora amount of battery icons and i have been using with this r style a and this is how it looks if you are noticing on the battery icon now here also you can change the battery percentage position of course next to the icon or inside the icon and status bar icons of course you can enable or disable then we have the roaming indicator colored icons bluetooth battery stats combined signal icons all those things are there you shouldn't worry about anything we have the notification things like the d ticker heads up you can of course customize in the we have this battery light in do not disturb that's for the notification light in the front camera and we have this blink flashlight for incoming call as well then we have the in call vibration options let me go back we have the quick setting customization and here we have a really awesome option that is called follow status bar style so once you have selected that or it is selected by default i would say right now even in the quick setting panel you will see it is following the status bar battery icon that's just awesome and here we have the battery percentage option too we have quick setting quick pull down and stuff and the brightness slider in the quick setting panel you can customize to show always and you can change the position to bottom if you want and we have this auto brightness icon enabling or disabling option then we have this user account clear all notification and stuff even the buttons for the clear all you can actually customize in the power menu we have this disable power menu on lock screen privacy kind of things power menu opacity and the dim background dialog everything you can customize advanced reboot and stuff you can elaborate it from right here let me go back we have the gesture settings and we have the brightness control so sliding a finger on the status bar will control the brightness long press power and toggle torch is working fine no issues we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar both in the buttons we have this system navigation and stuff then the per app volume control in the reorient everything is there you should not worry about it now in the lock screen this is where it gets interesting we have the edge lighting you can enable it and we have the lock screen charging info also the media cover art ripple effect and the authentication vibration and stuff but we do have this udfp settings let me just enable the dark theme so that it looks better so yeah in the udfps icon we have the screen of fod then we have udfps haptic feedback also we have the icon picker just notice how many icons are there and these are the fingerprint scanner icons you will get there are plethora of options if you are noticing and there are multiple newer options too like these kind of icons and we have this one the colorful one and this yellow one is what I'm, i have been using but yeah there are plethora of options to choose from and you can go with even this one let me see yeah i like this one pretty much there is uh, my option too so a lot of icons for the fingerprint scanner also the udfps animations are there and we have this bloom cyber electronic and cyberpunk 2077 mcrarin everything is there you shouldn't worry about it and this is new the genshin fire here it shows and we have this pulsar and stuff but with the genshin fire it looks awesome let me actually give you a demo quickly about the fingerprint scanner unlocking speed and i'm gonna be using screen of fod so i'm gonna just tap here and as you can see it unlocks just notice how fast it unlocks this is with 90 hertz all the time so yeah it unlocks fine let me show you one more time and just notice it unlocks and from the lock screen if i show you that from here i just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks and yeah definitely it looks beautiful by the way i have been using a wallpy wallpaper on this particular rom in the animations we have the charging animation screen of animation we have these three options and even the power menu appearing animation i guess you can customize from right here in the misc settings we have the always on display scheduling option then the game space and you can add any game that you would like to and you can see the fps stream it or just record it if you want with this and we have the smart pixels so you can actually enable that and we also have this burn in protection from right here let me go back we have this launch music up on headset connect now here we have this unlimited google photo storage unlock higher fps in games also there is a netflix spoof and it shows spoof your device as a different model for netflix i don't know how it will help the device already has drml1 but as of right now we are getting this netflix spoof if you are someone who uses netflix let me know if it works or not for you we have this pulse and we have this volume panel timeout you can customize that ignore windows secure flags the show cpu info 
even the USB configuration options are there. You can set it to file transfer for convenience. That's about it for the customization. Of course, you can donate to the developers from here in the team. The sound and vibration settings is pretty normal. We have this media call ring, etc. volume controls, then we have the do not disturb, the phone ringtone. The vibration and haptics are there and we have the dial per tone, street locking sound, charging sound and vibration. Power app volume control is there again. And we of course have this me sound and answer. We get multiple headset options. And here we have some Bluetooth options as well. Let me tell you the sound quality with the headphone jack with this Mi Audio Direct has been great. Even the speaker sounds great. We have this choose preset options too. You can actually choose the bass reduction, triple reduction, etc. The smart scene mode is also there. And we have this enable hi-fi option. If you have a great pair of earphones or headphones, you can actually use this. And inside the haptic feedback, we have this intensity controller. And you can actually control the intensity of the haptic feedback all over the UI. Let me go back, we have this silent media mute, this is a newer kind of feature. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, the adaptive brightness, extra dim feature and in the lock screen, we have these privacy controls and the control lock devices for Google Home controls I guess. And there is the screen of UDFPS again and wake screen for notification and in the advanced we will get the ambient display kind of settings. From here you can actually enable the pickup option if you want. Here we have the pocket detection, the screen timeout is up to 30 minutes, the dark theme you can actually enable from right here again. And we have the display size and text. This is the newer Android 13 kind of options. Wallpaper zoom effect and the live display options are there. We have the anti picker and stuff here again. And then we have the minimum maximum refresh rate. Of course, you can change it with that toggle to in the quick setting panel. Even the low power refresh rate you can set. That's great because whenever you enable the battery saver, it will switch your display to 60 Hz. So it will save battery. Double dial to wake is there and the prevent accident wake up and the wake up on plug. You can actually enable or disable from right here. There is also this refresh yet per app. If some apps are giving you weird experiences, you can set this app to like 60 Hz if you want. In terms of security, of course, we have the face unlock and fingerprint both. And here in the settings of it, we have the quick unlock. You should not worry about all those. But here, let me actually show you in the advanced, in the app lock, you can actually lock any particular app that you are looking for. Let me show you from the protected apps, you can lock any particular app. You can go even in detail like redact notification hide from launcher, all these settings are there. I can actually show you the locking and unlocking things. Of course, I have showed you the fingerprint scan and speed. That's why I'm gonna show you face unlock speed right now. For that, I just have to swipe up and look towards the camera. And as you can see, it unlocks. Let me show you one more time. So right now it shows recognizing face and it unlocks. So yeah, this is how it is. And let me swipe up again. And it unlocks. This is how the face unlock works. Let me show you the app lock and this is how it works and I just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks. By the way, this is how the recent panel looks like. You can take a screenshot, select some text, or you can go into the split top mode and stuff from right here. And if you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps from right here. And overall, the experience has been great and it has been a fluid UI. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to get you an idea about the overall performance of this ROM. And of course, safety net passes right out of the box, so you should not worry about the banking apps. You can use the banking apps right out of the box on this ROM. So let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the latest Evolution X ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro. I feel this is at again one of the most stable experiences of Android 13 that you can get. Yes, on other ROMs you can get a little more stock Android experience. But here you will get a much more customization and overall with all the features and the apps and stuff i would say it is a much more rock solid experience on the evolution x ROM because in some roms if you install lmc.4 it will work with the main camera as soon as you switch to the other lens it will force stop the camera but here it does not happen it works with all the lenses so this is where i see the evolution x ROM as one of the most rock solid stable rom for my usage let me in the comments what do you guys think give this video a thumbs up if you liked it Share this video with your friends if they want to know about the latest build of Evolution X ROM, how is it running on the Redmi K20 Pro. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.